Hello, we at Final Out lately got a lot of inquiry about how to use the arrow concept system with the arrow outsert. Okay, yes, we do make the 166 inner tube now for the for the 166 class. Besides a stalker, quite a few of you are smart enough to suggest using the CTI 166 inside the 166 shaft with the arrow outsert. Before we do that, we need to look at the design of the arrow outsert. Right on the get-go, I want to point out, see that the arrow outsert itself is 34 millimeter long. At the end of the thread is 17 millimeter, okay? And the front of the arrow, this section is 11 and a half. That means the entire portion of the threading is only five and a half millimeters. Now, when you look at the fuel point right here, that means just like this diagram, you can see that about this much is sticking into the shaft. So when you actually glue the arrow outside, uh, the, the arrow outside before you do that, you need to glue the tubing in first. When you glue the tubing in, you want to glue the tubing that so the tubing can be behind this. So just to be absolutely sure, you can always "Quote unquote," put the air, put the fuel point without the O-ring into the uh, into this first because with the O-ring you are now creating a seal. You won't have enough glue in it. But I really suggest that just, just put it in so you can see where it is, so that you can when you glue the tube in, you want to glue the tube in like this way, so it's slightly forward, so that whatever the fuel point length is, is at the end of it will not interfere with that tube. Okay. Now when you glue arrow concept in the tube, a few things are very critical. We build it based on the 166, which means the OD of this is 1667, okay? Uh, actually, uh, uh, 1665, because our shaft is 16657. Okay, so now when you put this thing in, you want to, first of all, you want to make sure that you can dry fit inside. If it have no issue with it, what you do, if it, if it can't go in one section, use 180 degree sandpaper, slightly sand it, to make sure that you're able to dry fit this piece in perfectly. Now see, in this piece is perfect because this is our arrow width 166 and this tubing is 0 0.166 and this is 0 0.164. So you got 2,000, you can vary easily. But you can't guarantee every single shaft is indeed with the diameter. The second part, the moment you send it, make sure you actually clean this piece in acetone. I mean pure acetone. Then you use our glue, H-U-S-S-E. Now this is one of the most important parts for the aero concept system. Because what this glue does is a formulator for us, specially. It is actually have a 36 hour dry time, and you, and you have over an hour of hour to an hour and a half of work time with it. Now, very important. A lot of people who are not familiar with epoxy, especially this cloud of epoxy, you do not put it on a piece of paper and try to mix it. You put it on aluminum foil. The reason for that because see, this hardener will literally uh, got absorbed into the paper. Now your ratio are no longer correct. And you notice that we put that in the syringe so that you can very accurately put precise amount of glue and you can mix them. See, just like all epoxies, epoxies, if you don't mix them correctly, it will not work right. Now, next thing you know, people say that, well, you know, after I glue this in and I just simply glue the arrow outside on top of it like that, right? No. <laughs> in the case that there's a few more work because it is a 166 class error, a lot more work needs to be done. I suggest you barely sand this section about 70 millimeter to give you a slightly rough surface. You don't have to be much. And you see that the outside right here, the inside is clear. I mean, it, it's, it's perfectly smooth. That means this is anodized and sealed. No glue can grab this surface. So what you need to do is you want to destroy this surface so glue have something to grab. The two easy way we know of is one using a stainless steel ball brush, and I prefer just use a small drill bit, which is slightly, and then do a rough, rough uh, ma in it. So in other words, I'm not really trying to change this surface to silver. I just want to give myself a few lines of raw metal that the glue can grab. Now, of course, right now this is what you do. You 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 push this tube in with the glue all the way in, and you in using this part to push in about two, three millimeter, not much, about this much, see that right there? So now this is set. Then you put more glue right here and you push this piece in. Now, after you push this in, this is where the APS come in real handy. This is what's called a hydro flow process. You grab this piece and then you roll the shaft. See that my hand's not moving, but I roll the shaft. What I do is I hydro flow the glue inside. And then you move your hand your head backwards until you see that now your eyes this piece and the outer line are aligned 
Now you can spin. See that? You can very clearly see whether they spin through or not. The moment you spin through, you want to make sure it's indeed all the way in, and then you stand your arrow, not your arrow straight up. So now this is where a lot of people make the mistake. You remember I just put the arrow concept tube inside here? And if I go ahead and do the arrow outside right now and stand the arrow up, there's a high chance the tube will slowly fall down. So the only way to guarantee this will work is that you put the glue, glue goes up to first. Then you set it for about at least 12 hours. Then you glue the arrow outside. Otherwise, you get up with a tube that moves up and down of this shaft that you cannot control. And second, you want to make sure the arrow outside itself is indeed concentric with the shaft. Then you got yourself an arrow outside with the arrow concept tubing. That concludes our video. Thank you.